Uh, but before we get started, I wanted to, um, yeah, everybody should be able to see the screen. I see a, a comment in there, in here. Uh, I, I was listening to uh, uh, Rob talk about uh, the gold market, and I believe he and I were together in London recently, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, at doing a little event there. But um, you know, I was very, very uh, pleased to hear what he was saying about gold, and I, I didn't plan on even going over gold today, but I just want to take a quick look at it because I could not agree more. You know, there's so many bulls out there in the gold market. I am, as you know, I mean, I am, I am certainly not one of them as of recently. Uh, you know, we've gone over this level here in FX Street, but if you take a look at the daily chart in the middle, uh, if you remember, we have this nice key supply level here just above 1,800. Uh, prices have fallen nicely from that level, and uh, they're down quite a bit. We're looking at 1666 at the moment. Um, but I would not say this is over yet. No, and I would not say uh, we're at demand, Maurice. In fact, if you go down a time frame and look to the left, a little rally up to the uh, 1680 to 1690 area, uh, I believe that's an, a decent supply level for another leg down in gold. And uh, where could gold possibly go to? Well, the big cue uh, for me, that, and we've gone over this here. Let me grab the chart for you once, once more. Um, oops, let me just grab the chart. There we go. Okay, so notice uh, back in September, price went all the way down to 1550. So what that does is, you know, think about it. If there was such strong demand, in other words, if there was an overwhelming amount of demand at say six, around 1600 or so why was price able to fall down to 1550 you see what I'm saying remember I, I come from the floor of uh, the biggest uh, exchange in the world the Chicago Mercantile Exchange and, and in fact I started in a currency uh, on the currency floor and I dealt with orders you know buy and sell orders from banks and institutions and money managers and everything else you know, in the forex markets, and I can tell you, if there's a stack of buy orders at a certain price level, there is no possible way price is going to move lower until every one of those buy orders is filled. Okay? Yeah, exactly, Pip Runner, the snowplow effect. So the fact that price is able to come down to 1550 tells me there's no solid demand until that price or lower. So what we do there is then we look to the left and we investigate this price action in July. Well, we don't see a whole lot of demand there either. So I think the first area of significant demand, now I'm sure we'll get plenty, plenty of little bounces before that, but the first area of significant demand for me is not till about 1450. Um, I'd be more specific around 1440. Okay, let me just draw that level in. Uh, so I was very, I was very uh, excited to hear the, the last part of the uh, last webinar here this morning. Um, I, I think that was great. Let's take a look. So let me put these lines in. And again, we've been talking about this uh, for for quite a while now. Just the fact that there's a significant picture of supply showed up in gold markets, suggesting that that rally is over for quite a while. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if prices came down to um, yeah, that, uh, you know, I would not be a very interested buyer until about 1450-ish. Make sense? Okay. So let's move, move on to uh, today's topic, and we'll keep that chart intact. And I'll start with the um, euro here. And let me get to the bigger time frame. Grab the chart, and there we go. Okay, so you might be thinking, wait a minute, is this a, is this a Sam Seiden webinar? Why do we see, you know, all these squiggly lines on the chart, right? I'm always the first one to tell you. Um, oh, oh, trader, sorry, just saw your question there. Yeah, you really really want to look at the origin of the drop. Where did that drop really start at? Where's that origin? Because that's where all the sell orders are. Okay. So that's how I came up with it. It's actually just above 1800, about 1810. So yeah, it is, is I, uh, you know, I always, I always uh, really preach the whole supply demand concept. 
meaning identifying what the picture of real willing demand and real willing supply looks like on a price chart, because ultimately that determines where prices are going to turn and where they're going to go to. Okay. So we, we go over that all the time, um, but I thought I would share uh, something else with you here that uh, that has become somewhat popular in one of the uh, trading rooms at Online Trading Academy. Now, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm going to tell you that you know all you need is the whole supply and demand, the, you know, the ability to identify key market turning points versus you know the others. In other words, the ability to identify supply and demand levels versus just, just thinking in terms of conventional support and resistance. Two very different schools of thought. So what we, once you get the supply demand concept down, what you can add to that, if you want, now I don't do this, but I see other people do it and they, and they seem to really like doing it. You can add Bollinger Bands, okay? And the, the strategy kind of goes like this. When prices are piercing the upper or lower Bollinger Band, and are into a fresh supply or demand level, okay, and are into a fresh supply and demand level, that's a pretty, that's typically a pretty high probability buying opportunity. But there's a bunch of key words there, okay? So when I say the word fresh, make sure you totally understand what I'm talking about. That is one of the most important odds enhancers when it comes to probability of the trade working out. Meaning, once a supply or demand level was created, is this the first time price is coming back into the level? The second, the third, you know, how many times has it been back? So if you take a look at this, uh, this is the euro, 60 minute chart of the euro on the screen. If we take a look at this chart and scroll left, you're going to see that I marked off a demand level down here, right there. Okay, right down here at the bottom. And I call this fresh demand because prices have not been back into this level yet. Okay. Prices have not, so once this level was created, and you know, and don't forget all the other odds enhancers. You know, did price leave this level in strong fashion? So yeah, so I was just saying, um, you know, make sure it's a fresh demand level. I was going over all the odds enhancers there. I, I think you got them. All right, so so yeah, the fact that uh, so so today is the first time price is coming back into that demand level. Okay, but make sure all the other odds enhancers are in play also. You're kind of piercing the lower Bollinger Band and hitting a fresh demand level, right? As long as it's well placed on the curve, uh, that's a you know you're likely to get a turning point there. Okay. Let me move on to a, another market here. Let's run through a few of these. So watch the euro down there. And I'm showing you this on the 60-minute chart. Uh, now, you can use this on any time frame, but I'm showing you the 60-minute because I think if you find these areas on a larger time frame, it's going to be safer. You could certainly use this on like a five-minute chart, but the, the one added piece of information you're going to need is where is that level on a larger time frame? Make sense? Let me go on to the next uh, market. Oh yeah, I, I saw some questions there. I'm sorry. So why not draw the lines at, uh, at at this area right here? Because we've already had some pullbacks into that level. Okay, right here. Right. Why not draw the lines right here at 32, uh, a little bit lower against this gap? Because if you scroll left, okay, notice how I scrolled left there. Right? Why not? Why not call this a demand level? Well, because this is just a pullback into this. Just like, you know, we wouldn't take this because you've already pulled back into it, right? Okay. And even if we thought there was some fresh demand here, take a look at how prices are declining down here. There, there's a, there's some supply way too close to that 32.50 demand, whereas our level down here that price is in, there's not. There's some room for this thing to move. Make sense? Now, you don't have to take this off as a giant, like, 60-minute trade. You could just day trade off this level as well. All right, let's move on to, and don't forget step number two in the whole supply-demand strategy. There's two steps. Step number one is the level. Step number two 
make sure you know who you're trading with. Okay, so think about it. When we look at the sellers down here, okay, when we when we when we look at the sellers, yeah, so so FX, watch that odds enhancer because remember, you know, the reason why we wouldn't want to buy against this gap is because there's supply sitting just above. Profit margin is a deal killer for supply demand, right? So remember down here, you know, who is selling? Is it a consistently profitable seller or a consistent losing seller? In other words, is that seller making the same two mistakes that every consistent losing trader makes? Right? Are they selling after a drop in price? Mistake number one. Are they selling into a price level where demand exceeds supply? Mistake number two. Okay. All right, let's move on to the next chart here. Uh, yeah, uh, laser, if there's enough of a profit margin when prices come back there, sure. Okay, let's move on to the Aussie here. Hey, 1FX, uh, if you get a chance, uh, I put my email address in here, sidenettradingacademy.com. Send me an email uh, when you, if you get a chance with it and attach a couple charts to it and mark up the charts a little bit with some levels. We'll, we'll take a look and make sure that you're looking at it the right way. Not levels that worked out already, levels in the future, like potential trades. All right, let's take a look. So we're looking at uh, the Aussie here. So we've got two fresh demand levels down there to the left. Again, keywords, fresh demand levels. Okay. Uh, this area price moved away in very strong fashion. So, so for, uh, for the all-star entry here, if prices reach this level and are piercing the lower Bollinger Band, okay, in one of the trading rooms at Online Trading Academy, we would call that the all-star entry, all right? Uh, because, you know, in theory, and again, I'm not a big Bollinger Band guy. I'm not an indicator guy really ever. But the theory is that, you know, once you get out to the extreme, the more, you know, the more you get out to the extreme, the more likely price is to revert to the mean. Of course, where exactly is that happen, going to happen? A supplier demand level. That's how it works, right? Okay. So let's uh, let's keep going here. Um, the other thing you want to watch for is, you know, make sure the other odds enhancers are in play. In other words, you have to have a profit margin when you get down here. Ideally, you'll see a big red candle and price just collapse out of the area it's in now. That's an entry I would take here. If this is if there's a slow gradual grind down here, um, the odds enhancer profit margin would keep you out of this trade. Okay. Uh, no, Jano, this is a this is a spot market, not a not a futures chart. Last session we looked at the futures. Well, the, the fact is when you know when price left this area, it hasn't been back here. Same with this lower one. Only this lower one has something else in it. Um, first of all, you got that nice strong rally out of there. Notice price barely came back here. Okay, but uh, couldn't actually touch the level. What does that tell us about the supply-demand equation at the level? Small imbalance or big imbalance? Probably a big imbalance, right? We get a little clue already. So I'd be more excited about this lower area here. So keep an eye on that one. And again, it's going to be an all-star entry. Um, you want to see price piercing the lower Bollinger Band and reaching the demand level. Okay, while it's outside the lower Bollinger Band. Your targets, your profit targets, are going to be the midline, the upper Bollinger Band, but of course the first target always needs to be the opposing supply level. And of course your stop is going to be on the other side of the level. Yeah, Brad, I, I somewhat agree, I kind of agree with you on that upper level. The lower one uh, looks really good though. And again, I'm showing you these on 60-minute charts. What uh, what day traders tend to do is they'll put this, they'll put the Bollinger Bands and levels on something like a 60-minute chart, but then they'll take these trades off a smaller time frame. Okay. People that like to day trade these. Uh, FX, correct. But usually, where you're at on the curve will take care of that. And usually the quality of the level itself takes care of that, that pullback. 
Let's look at another one, and I'll explain it. Uh, I'll explain it. Let's go over to. I think we're going to go to the end next. Uh, yen, I have a couple things here. Give me just a second. I'll get it up for you. Okay, let's start. To, yeah, the, the S&P is, the S&P, NASDAQ, FESX, those charts are just set up uh, beautifully for this today. Okay, lots of nice supply levels sitting just above. Great supply levels before the open. All right, so let's uh, let's take a look at the yen. So here we have, uh, this one I'm going to show you already has one pullback. So this is not a fresh level down here. Here's our demand level, which the level itself looks really good. A little bit of trading here, not too much, and then a strong rally away. Price comes back and barely touches this level. So this is the one caveat. You know, well, I always say make sure it's a fresh level and only take the first pullback. Well, most of the time. The only time you can take, or at least I would suggest that it's okay to take another pullback, is if that first pullback, prices just touch the level and take off. See that? So the fact that price just touches the level and takes off tells us there's probably a lot of willing demand here. Big stack of buy orders just sitting there waiting to be filled. Okay? So what I would do is absolutely wait for a new low, not an equal low to this pivot or a higher low, but a new low into the level. You want to see a new low. That's going to set up a nice bear trap. Uh, hopefully the, uh, ideally I should say, prices will be below the lower Bollinger Band, and that would be an all-star entry. Okay, and I'm taking kind of my time to show you these, so you can mark your charts up with these. You have lots of, lots of trades, uh, sitting there waiting to be taken. Okay. Now what about, um, now there's another level here to potentially buy against. This would not be an all-star entry. I, I don't think it's, uh, I think it's, yeah, it's, not, it's probably not going to be an all-star entry. It's possible, but probably not. Let me draw it in. Okay. As a, as a, if you're a day trader, you might want to consider this one as well. There's a, there's a level much closer to current price. If you take a look, I just drew in another demand levels here. Um, okay. Buying at 77.65. With a stop just below 77.60, and a target of uh, probably about two to one on that uh, to the first target, I should say. But again, that's not going to be—that's probably not going to be an all-star entry. It's going to be pretty difficult for price to pierce the lower band to get there. Pip Runner, you're, you're not going to find too many all-star entries in the context of an ongoing trend. They're either going to be reversals of a trend. Or when the market's just going sideways, you know, getting in at the extremes. Okay, this level I just drew in here, this more of a rally based rally. Those are the levels you're going to find in the trends. Those are the safest levels to get in, uh, you know, while, while you're trend trading. Okay. Yeah, so a lot of people, a lot of people really like these. Um, again, as I said before. Uh, yeah, the Bollinger Bands are not the key point here. It's just, you know, a lot of people really like the indicators. They can't get off the indicators. Again, I don't use indicators. I don't use Bollinger Bands. But, uh, you know, you could just take the trades at the levels themselves. Uh, but if you want some added confirmation, they're out at an extreme. You know, some people like the Bollinger Bands, and, and that's okay. All right. All right, let me take you to another one, and, and we'll slow down and start to do some of this together. All right, let's take a look at, uh, now we're looking at the uh, Canadian versus the U.S. dollar. All right. Uh, FX magnet, yeah, you're absolutely right, okay? Absolutely. That's, that's what I meant, yeah. Because there's really, you know, if you get that strong move out of there, there's, there's no orders there to stop prices from coming in at almost the same rate. And that's what's usually going to happen. Yeah, Brad, that's true. Absolutely. You know, you know, if you've been trading a while, you don't need to put the indicator on there to see if it's overbought or oversold. And again, like I said, you know, I, I don't do this, but uh, I see a lot of people doing it, and they seem to like it. It is kind of weird for me to do a webinar with indicators on the chart. I'll, I'll admit that. 
So let's take a look at the Canadian dollar. Now here we see the Bollinger Bands, but I have not drawn in the levels yet. So let's start on the um, on the demand side. Where would we find our first area of demand? Let's see how well uh, you do with this, and then I'll, I'll draw on the levels. Where do we see our first area of demand below current price? Yeah, probably that 102. Exactly. So let me draw that in, and then we'll move to the next uh, next level. I'll grab the chart for you. So the nearest area of demand below current price uh, looks to be right here. Okay. So uh, about 102.10 as the buying opportunity with the stop just below, uh, just about 101.80. Okay. Uh, Ali, you know what? This is kind of a little rally-based rally coming out of this little dip here. Remember, ra rally-based rally and drop-based drop, those are just, remember, there's either rally-based rally or drop-based rally. Make sense? Okay. So either is okay, you just have to apply the odds enhancers to them. All right, so here's our demand level below current price. Right? We want to be a buyer there. Of course, this would not uh, be an all-star entry. What about our supply level above current price? Now, to, to new people, this is going to be very tricky. They'll probably get it wrong, uh, at least according to, you know, the, the strategy that we talk about here all the time. What about supply? Where do you see supply here? There. All right, nice job. Uh, Lottie, Lottie got that. So there's our supply level above current price. In other words, fresh level above current price. Again, I, I wouldn't be that interested in this 103.50 uh, or it's just a little bit higher here. Okay, so notice these are both fresh levels. I wouldn't be that interested in this one because you have so many pullbacks. Price spent so much time here already. But if we got a nice rally up into here, it's 104, and you were piercing the upper Bollinger Band, okay, uh, they would call that an all-star entry. Remember, the level has to be fresh. So first pullback, I can write some of these out for you. That way you'll have it. Let's go over the odds enhancers for this one. So one, you want a strong move away from the level. Two, needs to be fresh. Needs profit margin. Uh, those are the big ones. Um, put the time one in there. And one more. Let's do it like this. Okay. Let's go over these. Let me take another picture in case that didn't show up. All right there. And this session is being recorded too. So that first one, yeah, strong move away from the level. We have that here. Um, needs to be fresh. It is. So when price, since price left the level, it has not been back to the area. You need a profit margin, meaning when price comes back to this level, the nearest area of demand needs to be at least, you know, twice this distance, whatever, whatever this distance is. Time, you know, how much time did price spend at the level? Was was there like five candles or was there like you know twenty? Less time is better. A lot of few people are asking why. Well, um, this is kind of opposite of the trading books. But when the trading books teach us to identify key support resistance levels on a chart, they say look for areas on the chart where you have lots of trading activity, many candles on the screen, right? But if you think the logic through, I think you're going to find that the opposite is true. 
What I mean by that is, you know, think about it. As uh, at price levels where supply and demand is most out of balance, which is what we want, you know, that's where you're going to get your biggest turn. Are you going to get many transactions there or very few? You're going to get very few. Okay, that's because of the big imbalance. So if we agree with that, what does that picture look like on a price chart? You know, many candles, like all the trading books say, or very few. It's going to be very few. So we kind of have that here too. Could be better. Um, again, yeah, you want you want your, you want to find supply levels and downtrends to buy to sell against, demand levels and uptrends to buy against. Yeah, that they again uh, that that gap up there. Uh, you probably find a level on top of that, but this other level comes up first. That's why we drew it in. Uh, Pip runner, yeah, larger time frame curve. You know, you just need to find the fresh levels. They're always there, and that helps define the curve. Okay, and and we're talking like daily, weekly charts, rally base drop, drop base rally. Okay, rally base rally, drop base drop. Either one of those to define the big picture levels. Uh, Andrea, what we're saying there is, you know, just generally, how do prices leave the level? Uh, might be the first candle, usually is, but but the first, I'd say, two or three candles. You know, was it a strong drop in price or was it a very gradual drop in price? And uh, when we say supply demand curve, that's a big one. What we're saying there is, like, we're looking at a 60 minute supply level here, right around 104. So if I go over to, well, let me do this. Let me make this a weekly chart here, just a second. Chart with level. The supply level we're looking at, this upper set of black lines here, it looks a little kind of, uh, a lot of stuff going on here, but this is where that supply level is on the hourly chart, but we're looking at it on the weekly. So is this low on the curve near a demand level, or is it high on the curve near a prior turn to the downside? See what I mean? Yeah, again, we don't go over all the odds enhancers here in our webinars. Um, obviously, that wouldn't be fair to all the people in the Online Trading Academy uh, trading rooms, but I try to give you as many as we can here to, to make sure you, can, you really start to get this stuff and, and help. So this supply level is pretty, you know, is is, is you know, it's well up there on the curve, and it's right in the area of a prior turn to the downside. You know, in, instead, what if the supply level is like right down here, right into this big picture demand? Okay, so that would be low on the curve. We wouldn't want that. Let me make this 60-minute uh, chart again, and we'll move on. All set there with the Canadian, and and uh, what I like most about this is we we did this one together. Okay. Again, you don't need the Bollinger Bands, but some people that are really addicted to them, they need the indicators. You know, at least this is one. Um, you know, the, the reason why price is turning is not because of the Bollinger Band, it's because of the level itself. Okay. But at least this will tell you, you know, if, if 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 in relation to recent price action, you're relatively at an extreme or not. Go back to our euro that we started with. Uh, so this one's. We're now rallying out of the zone. Of course, the key thing is we need to find it in advance, like we did here during the session. Um, and again, the the key to this one though is, yeah, yeah, you did pierce the lower band, but remember the, all those odds enhancers. Let me scroll back to the level. This was a fresh level. Okay. This is a fresh little base coming out of a pretty big turn. And you had no pullbacks. That's what makes it fresh. Uh, make sense? Okay. And yeah, if uh, anybody, if you took this one, I don't know if anybody took. Anybody take this one here? If you did, you have to be careful because there's going to be some supply coming in. You know, just before this green candle here. Uh, so that would be 32. You know, the, the green candle is around 32.40. So I'd look for some profit taking before that. Okay. And always make sure you're okay with the risk. That's obviously the most important part here. Uh, but I think you get the point. Okay. Um, let's take a look at another market. Uh, does anybody have a market they want to look at? I don't. I don't care which markets we look at. I was probably just going to go to the pound next. 
We looked at so many of the others. Okay, let's look at the let's look at the pound. All right, Haley, uh, nice job there on that one. Uh, Jano, you know, that's a good question. If you, you know, in the spot market, yeah, I would be careful trading on smart time frames that are too small. You have to be careful with that. Yeah, how do you supply demand strategies in less liquid markets? I, um, you know, I probably just wouldn't trade less liquid markets. There's so many good markets out there. 60 minutes, uh, especially with the Bollinger Bands and, and levels. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good time frame to keep people out of trouble. You know, if you think about it, if you're finding, if, you, if someone is brand new to this, and I, and I figured there'd be a lot of new people in here, and they start out looking for levels on five-minute charts in the spot market, not knowing where they're at in a the bigger time frame, you can really get into trouble doing that. You can do very well if you know what you're doing, but it's it's a very safe, you know, safe and solid. You're combining big picture and small picture. That's the main point. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah, and I was talking about the first target there. All right, let's take like, a look at the pound. So when I first pulled this chart up, I thought, oh, there's really not a whole lot to do here. We've been in this big range for a few days. Uh, but, I, but, but after looking at it, I, I thought, you know, this is a great market to look at uh, because, you know, you need to recognize where the key levels are. Yeah, Andrea, keep watching that dollar chart. I can tell you, I use the dollar index chart, that, uh, that dollar sign DXY that uh, Andrea's talking about, um, for almost every trade that I make whether it's a, a currency or the S&P or a commodity. Okay, that, that dollar is a huge chart for me. And the levels are, have you found that the levels are very clear and, e, you know, just very easy to find and spot on the, uh, on the DXY? Okay, just very, yeah, yeah, Andrea, very easy. They're, the levels are very clear and, when was the last time a clear level in the DXY didn't didn't work? I mean, they all you know they all work out pretty well. So I'm not saying you know everyone is going to work out going forward. I'm just saying the larger time frame levels play out very nicely. Okay. And you know what? You can even it's not even if you're just kind of swing trading. You don't even need to pay for a data feed or anything. You can you could probably just Google a dollar index chart and, and find a good kind of you know, delayed data chart or end of day chart. You know, I, I look at the real time version, but you don't have to. Al, typically, but not always, typically, okay, now it comes out of those odd, odd enhancers. So take a look at the pound. Now notice, you know, you might, you know, these pivot lows and highs recently, they're all pullbacks into other levels, okay? So I have no problem going beyond all these pivot highs and pivot lows and finding a fresh level. And let me do that here. This pound can really move, so don't worry about being really picky here and finding something you know much uh, much lower on the curve. So let me draw these uh, this little level in here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I agree with you. Right down here. Okay. Now you might think, well, price isn't going to get there for a while. Well, it really could. Don't 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 think like that because there's really nothing fresh around here. Okay. Had we started this session uh, quite a bit earlier, we'd have taken this nice supply level here. This was a fresh level, but it's not fresh anymore. Now prices have traded off that and they're falling. So now, do I know? Okay. Do I know that prices are going to get down to this level, like today or tomorrow? No, I don't know that. But if they do, I'm, you know, I'm an interested buyer, right? If the risk and reward is there. Yeah, one FX. I could not agree with you more. I'm telling you, I look at that dollar index chart for almost every trade I make, whether it's in the S&P or, like I said, the commodities, um, obviously the currencies. It really gives you great big big picture uh, guidance, if that makes sense. Now, if you really want it to work well for you, don't go out and tell all your friends to do it because uh, you know you want to you want to keep the edge. All right, I'm kind of just kidding about that, but I'm also kind of not. 
All right, here's a beautiful level up here, and I think we could still call this fresh. Um, it depends on where you draw your lines, but if you draw them the way that, according to our rules, I think you're, I think this is going to be a fresh level up here. Yeah, you know, Brad, you you are so right. Um, it, it's amazing, but man, you're you're correct. I agree. Okay, let me draw this other one up here. So take a look. Uh, there's a supply level above current price, sitting just under 158. We almost had a pullback here, okay, but uh, we didn't. Uh, you know, it didn't touch that level. That suggests that there's a pretty big supply-demand imbalance right up here at the origin of that drop, right? Prices could almost get there, but couldn't, you know, barely did, but couldn't. Okay, that's a big clue. All right, so we've got our, our uh, demand below all this congestion. We've got our supply above all these highs. The other thing that looks, that looks, that I like about these levels, especially this supply level, is everybody's going to be focused on these two pivot highs. And what everybody, you know, is going to think is that if you trade higher than those two pivot highs, you're going to get a breakout. And that leads most people to a buy. Most people are going to push the buy button. But not us. Okay, that sets up a bull trap. We love bull and bear traps the right way. Not the textbook version of a bull and bear trap, the real world version of a bull and bear trap. So I'll, I'll even type that in here because that's the scenario. Okay. So let's just draw a supply. And then bull trap. Move these words around here. So the bull trap is only in play if we trade above those two pivot highs. Okay, I will circle them for you just so we're all very clear. Take another picture. There you go. Okay, so we've got our supply level to short at here. Uh, if you trade above these two circled pivot highs, that uh, has the potential for a bull trap, meaning you're trapping the bulls on the wrong side of the market. All right, no questions on that. Let's move on. Uh, let me just go back. I think there were some questions. Apologize if I missed a question. Yeah, so I see there's an important question there from uh, Vishal. Yeah, make sure whatever time frame you're trading in, you've looked a, a few time frames higher. It's, it's, it's so important to know where you're at on the larger time frame curve. Okay, I mean, if anybody is surprised with, this, with the equity index markets around the world being down today, um, all you have to do, I mean, you know, we've been talking about this for a while. Look at where, uh, let me just pull one up here. this. I have my lines drawn on the NASDAQ, but I can draw them in here as well. Here's the S&P weekly. Again, this is why the larger time frame curve is so important. Right? We were right into this larger time frame supply level, and if you look at how prices came there, there's nothing below to stop prices from falling. Take a picture again, right? That's why we've been so bearish on the equity index markets. Yeah, Brad, I mean, if you clearly took your, um, you know, your trade off, off of uh, a larger time frame, you know, it depends. I mean, if you're talking about a, a daily level and daily opportunity, I wouldn't worry about a, 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 an opposing level on a five-minute chart. But if it's like a, a, an opportunity found on a 30-minute time frame, and there's an opposing level on a 15-minute chart, yeah, that could be an issue. So if there's time frames really spread apart, I wouldn't even consider it. Okay. Yeah, nice, nice job there. Good. No, it's uh, glad to see you know you're getting this and hopefully making money from it. That's the whole point. Okay. And I know we're running out of time here. Let me just. Uh, 
Let me just do this. Let's take a look at our euro that we started the session with. Um, so we've got a little bit higher in the euro. Okay. And remember, you, you know, where you're going to take profits and stuff, uh, ultimately up to you. Um, what, what I wanted to focus on here was more of the entry because the key to a, a good trade is the entry. Make sense? All right, there's my email address again. Um, if you have any questions or, or comments, remember everything we do at Online Trade Academy is very rule-based and, um, and we pre-plan everything we do. So I want to focus on entries today. All right, entries, because uh, without, a, without a key entry at a turning point, it's impossible to take a low risk, high reward, and high probability entry. Okay. All right, excellent. Have a great day, everybody. Hopefully that was helpful. And again, there's my email address. Thanks for your time. And, uh, and hope you make uh, lots of money in this Euro trade. We'll talk to you later. Thanks.